um, I was uh, in the process of uh, doing a post in the in one of the Slack communities, the the business science uh, community, mm -hmm. and um, it's something that I I found in one of the data sets on the exercises, and I want to check you know what the you know what other people you know think about it. Mm. So maybe we can, you know, spend some time there. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's about that answer uh, data set, you know, ah. that uh, counts the, the traffic of economy passengers from Melbourne to Sydney. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, you know, when you, when you plot the time series, you know, it's hard not to notice that there's a big dip in, in a period. Okay, I mean, it goes like a can, it goes boom, really down to, to zero and then back up. And I said, well, that, that's weird. <laughs> and then when you start reading, it's because uh, apparently during that period, there was a pilot strike. Okay, there was oh. a pilot strike and, you know, airlines couldn't, you know, couldn't, couldn't fly or carry passengers. And the questions that I'm posing to the community is, uh, you know, how would you deal? you know, with that kind of anomaly, especially if you want to use this data to, to make a prediction. Something similar was posted related to COVID, okay? Because, uh, for example, there's some uh, econ economical segments, for example, restaurants, uh, hotels, and even, even hospitals, okay? You know, in the, on the other side, but I'm talking about downside. Mm -hmm. uh, that usually you have to, you know, you have you have to deal with it in the time series fashion because that is kind of something that it doesn't happen, you know, frequently, right? You know, it's just maybe one in a time, like this 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 uh, time series. So uh, yeah, so uh, and there were a couple of ideas in terms of you know how to deal with it. Uh, for example, you know, one of the ideas that I could pitch. You know, if, if it was a, you know, it, it was my, my, the question to the, you know, to the, to the managers uh, there, uh, how to handle that is that because ANSET is one of the airlines, maybe, you know, we have to see if there were other airlines flying in Australia that were not affected by the pilot strike. So then you can get some baseline on maybe how to, you know, how to imp mm -hmm. impute. For example, if this didn't happen, this will have been the normal course of business. And then now you have, you know, like a complete, you know, tree, like a missing data. Now you have a complete time series and then you can, you know, proceed with your, with your analysis. I mean, that, that's something that is, was floated also with the COVID. You know, try to see if there were certain periods, okay, similar, something similar, because it won't be exact, identical, but something similar that had, for example, recession, okay? You know, data from a recession, from the last recession, that could give you some ideas of how, you know, uh, a pattern can be replicated with that particular event. Mm. So, but I'm going to post it and see, see what happens. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I'm quite curious though, because, um, mm -hmm. For example, for that labor strike, right? If the model doesn't receive any information whatsoever regarding the outside world, regarding uh -huh. like the situation of the workforce that led them to uh, making the strike, right? How is it possible, actually? For example, if you just feed it, fit the model with passenger data or just numbers totally unrelated with um that situation mm -hmm. how can we actually yeah encode that in the model that's what i'm sort of thinking yeah but that, um, that will be that will be the challenge right yeah that, yeah that, that will be the, the question if you for example for example if we have certain certain data from different parts of australia that have a similar pattern because you have to you know you have to do your, your work, right? Mm -hmm. you, you are trying to justify that what I'm doing is the correct way of, 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 of seeing or dealing with this. So probably, for example, if you have 
uh, data from, let's say from Melbourne to a, another place, from another airline that it was not you know, uh, affected by, by this. So maybe we can put those time series, you know, one on, on, on top of the other, right? On the, on the plot and see what is the correlation. If they have a, a, you know, mm. a good, strong correlation, then you can assume that that data could be suitable, right? You know, to impute your, your model. And then you can do some, you know, some comparisons, right? All ah, right. But, but, so but it's just, but I, I, I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, okay. maybe that's not the correct way, you know, to do it. <laughs> so you're sort of trying to see data from other time series that match the pattern. Right. The data at hand. Exactly. And then you, so it's like you sort of try to superimpose the two graphs and then. Exactly. Okay. So for example, right. if I see, if I see that this is, you know, a pattern that, you know, it correlates, right? Mm -hmm. The pattern that, I, that, that I'm dealing with that I has that, that zero, then yeah. uh, maybe I can use this, then that pattern to then, you know, impute that. Okay. Okay. So that, that's an idea that, that, that I have, but you know, hey, uh, everyone can pitch in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kevin. Hey, sorry, it's uh, just getting back from something. How are you guys doing? Good, good. good. Uh, discussing something that I'm going to post. Are, are you in business science uh, Slack? No, uh, okay. I know of it, but I, okay. I've never taken anything from there. Okay. Is it, can anyone join it or do you have to take the course? Uh, I think you have to, you know, subscribe to one of the uh, Mad, Mad products, uh, Mad Danko products, okay, to get access uh, to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's something that, you know, uh, we're discussing in, in one of the exercises. And it's something that, like, kind of an anomaly in one of the data sets of the exercises, the ANSET. Uh, 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 traffic passengers in Australia, and um, I'm going. Uh, the thing I, I'm going to post it there, and see, you know, what is the, what 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 is some of the recommendations when you have that type of a situation? Yeah, uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Kyle is showing it exactly what what I'm talking about. <laughs> that that dip. <laughs> I actually didn't realize that it touches the zero line. Yeah, yeah, it, it goes. All the way down yeah. yeah that's what i said wait a minute wait a minute what, what's what's going on here you know <laughs> this is not this is not a, the, the usual pattern uh, i mean for 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 uh, passenger traffic you know <laughs> but i guess like uh i mean i think it's important i guess one part of my question is mm -hmm. is, is it real data you know like i think it's maybe likely that it's that the zero observation is isn't you know, it's a mistake or something, but if it isn't right, like it, it actually does seem like there's some kind of a seasonality to it potentially, right? Like, like, was it like a couple of years later, there's that large dip. Okay. Um, from, from, from the research that I did, and it, this is, it comes hmm. from the, from the data set itself. Okay. And there was a period there where there was a pilot strike. Okay. In, you know, in, in Australia. There was a pilot strike and that result in certain weeks of, uh, of zero traffic. That's how they, they explain it. Okay. So apparently this is, this is real. You know, this is not, you know, uh, fake, fake <laughs> data. And I'm going to pose the question, I was discussing with uh, Mikhail that, you know, what would be your, you know, what, what would be your recommendation in terms of if we should use this data set for you know future predicting, or we have to do something with this anomaly, you know what 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 would you do? Okay, because um, for example, I know that in the Walmart, you know the M five competition, uh, the Walmart uh, data sets, uh, there were a, a lot of products, okay, seasonal products there that they don't have a demand in certain certain seasons, okay, so it, it creates problems. In the you know in the in the in the algorithm when you want to predict the demand of that of that product, so there are some ways you know to to deal with it. But I want to you know understand them better, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is precisely this is one of the one of those cases when you you have just this event that doesn't occur you know periodically, and 
it really affects your, you know, your time series uh, significantly. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, 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 I was thinking out loud of yeah. maybe trying to, you know, get uh, certain, uh, you know, other data similar, you know, to this and try to see, you know, if we can, uh, you know, discern a pattern from that for that period. But yeah. uh, I mean, uh, anything is possible here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one, I mean, one thing is, um, I don't know, mm -hmm. one potential observation is like, I think it might depend also on the forecasting method you're using. Uh -huh. uh, right. Because right. something like, like exponential smoothing, for instance, you know, after a few windows or a few periods of mm -hmm. data, after that, it's not going to have much memory of much, that. Yeah, much weight, right? Of, of yeah. that event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so that's right. one consideration, but this is actually similar, um, a similar question, I think, to uh, I think what a lot of people struggle with with COVID. Correct. Um, yep. Because yep. because you have this event that I mean, it's persisted for a while, but there was that initial period where everything was shut down, like uh, right mm -hmm. after March 2020. And right. And there was this. Um, yeah. The, the, like I would say until. I mean, a lot of data that I was working with until like October uh, okay. that year, it really took to seem like it kind of reconnected with the previous trend. But um, I don't know, one way I approach it, I think there's a lot of ways to approach it. I don't know if this is the smartest way, but mm -hmm. basically I just, and I think when I logged on, you said something about imputing. Like basically I, I from that moment, right before COVID, I like used whatever forecasting method I was using to mm -hmm. predict the next six months. And then I use that data into the future as the, as like real data, you That's know, real the, data. Okay. The, pr the prediction for that period. So that, um, yeah, I'm basically like imputing, like as if it's missing for that period. Right. And then, and mm -hmm. then, and then, and then resuming with the previous, um, um, but I mean, another, so another way to approach it too, is like, if you have a, um, a method that you can use like uh, exogenous predictors, like um, mm -hmm. something other than the, the time series itself. Time series. Right. You right. could you could actually add like labels and say, you know, was there a lockdown or was there not a lockdown? You know, and then and then and then it could know to kind of uh, you know factor in a penalty or whatever whenever that 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 is mm -hmm. true that's true for instance so right right so so you could use it you could use it as a as a you know use that data and then kind of not actually impute anything and just um bring in that information but i feel like the problem with forecasting is that like how do you know into the future when there's going to be another lockdown you know like right. like like you don't really um no, and and, and now oh, yeah. the, the, the the talking in the economical, you know, uh, uh, near future is that you know is there going to be a recession or not? Okay, at least in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I mean, th there could be some indicators, you know, from the you know the Treasury yield, you know, the inverse curve, all that, you know, but uh, nobody knows. Okay, yeah. really. So basically, what you have to do is try to you know. To, to consider it, I try to get contingency plans for that. I think that will be the the, the, the approach that, that I would do it. Okay, you know, have different scenarios in terms of okay, if this pattern continues, then yeah, we're we're really going you know to a recessional period, or maybe we ha will have a soft landing or something you know in between, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, nobody, I mean, if if we know the future, I mean, hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you're you're made right you know yeah you got it i think that's you're really right. smart you're, you're god I think, on earth <laughs> i think that's really smart though um with yeah. the different the different scenario type yeah. of approach so like you could say because i think that's really valuable for decision making you know mm -hmm. when you when you give people a few realistic scenarios especially when they right. diverge so much from each other you know yeah. um but but you could at least give people the tools to plan for each uh, case. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, let's say like, yeah, this new variant is is more is more severe COVID than previously thought and it escapes previous immunity, then, you know, 
this is how it might impact like and there's a ton of lockdowns this is how it might impact things like that right. if there's no lockdowns but a ton of sickness or whatever the, i don't know like like i'm sure there's a bunch of different ways you could think about that um but yeah it's hard too because like i mean that kind of thing is really difficult also because a lot of it's about like human behavior and like and like Correct. policy and like and like like collective psychology and and um who knows like even if it's super severe how uh, i doubt many things will be shut down like like i think people mm-hmm. are realizing now they're like oh there was a really really negative impact of shutting down schools Correct. and like so how do you how do you predict in that kind of climate uh, it's really hard yeah yeah that, that definitely when you consider you know social factors that they're not you know harm you know harm measure you know you cannot measure hard uh it's uh you know it's it's gamble really it's gamble uh but, but i don't think at least in the u.s i don't think that there's going to be that kind of uh you know our lockdown that we had you know at the beginning of covid because we have learned you know certain things along the way and um you know, hopefully it, it won't be that that severe hopefully but nobody knows. yeah nobody knows <laughs> yeah um what the other, another point about the about the exogenous predictor uh, yes. point is like the difficulty I think that often comes up when you incorporate other kinds of predictors or other time series into like multiple time series into a prediction or into a model forecasting model is that for each one of those predictors exogenous predictors you have to then extrapolate those out into the future as well in order to right. forecast um, unless unless it's something like the time of year where you know what the value is going to be in the future. Mm-hmm. But, but if it's, if it's something else, you know, where that has its own uncertainty, then <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, and I, and I, one thing I'm interested in with this book actually is like in that kind of case, mm-hmm. how do you represent, how do you fold in all of that uncertainty? You know, the uncertainty from, Right. from each of those time series that you're using to predict the primary thing you're interested in like how do you fold in all the uncertainty you know it's like uncertainty layered on uncertainty layered on uncertainty how do you how do you incorporate mm-hmm. all of that into the final uh uh prediction <laughs> interval you know because like yeah because like one of the predictors might be you know i don't know like uh one of them might be weather which is like Maybe you could predict it to a decent degree of accuracy if it's like temperature or something. Right. But then, but then if it's, you know, like, um, yeah, like economic growth, um, there's a ton of uncertainty there. So, Correct. Uh, uh, you know, somehow that has to make its way into the uncertainty of the final prediction. If you're predicting, let's say, like, you know, like airline travel, you know, um, uh-huh. yeah. But I just don't, I just raising that, that observation. Yeah. I don't have any, any good answers, but um, I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, so are we going to cover the exercises or go into the chapter four? <laughs> um, well, looking at the time, should we just go to chapter four? What do you think? Sure. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, and if we still have time, then we can go to the exercise. Okay. So let me check here. How do I share here? I always forget how to share. <laughs> okay. Let me check where it is. What is chapter four? Uh, Okay, let me see if it's this. Let me see that I'm at. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that, that was the link for the answer airline and um, that's the that's the reason why you know we get the dip you know it's it's right there <laughs> okay so but it's actually quite cool to see that there is this annotation of the data right <laughs> i mean i've 
<laughs> I, I never yeah. looked into this kind of um, description. I know. So. Apparently, you know, they got some questions before. I said, okay, you know, let's let's make it clear, you know, why you're All saying right. dip. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so okay, so this is uh, chapter four, and chapter four, the main topic is um, uh, time series features. Okay, let me position this video here so I can then uh, do it. So uh, th this chapter is divided in this. You know, I kind of. Uh, uh, repurpose it for the learning objectives, you know, following the, the format uh, that the book clubs are, at least are, are recommending. Uh, but this is basically the uh, the sections, right, of, of this chapter. So we all already have seen that we can do some transformations for the time series, for example, uh, calculate means, calculate, uh, we haven't seen the quantile yet, but we're going to see it right now. And we have seen also that we can transform, for example, do log transformations, uh, uh, lambda, uh, box fox uh, transformations with the lambda uh, Guerrero uh, 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 method. Okay, so that's something that is not is not new to us. Then the next one is that they cover a little more, a little bit, a little bit deeper, deeper on the concept of the autocorrelation features, the ACF, okay, and, and lag. And we're going to see, you know, what that is all about. Uh, then also they discuss more in detail the concept of the season, seasonal trend lag, the STL uh, decomposition that we have seen also in chapter three. So it's kind of a continuation. And also introduces the feast, okay. Uh, you know, when I when, when I heard that the that, that name of the packet, I said, what kind of things are we talking about? You know, the, the buffet style or the, you know, <laughs> but it's an acronym, of course, you know, it's an acronym of what the, what the package is. But basically the package, what it does is that facilitates, uh, you know, creating features out of the, out of the time series. And of course, as, as we have seen during, uh, during the first chapters, uh, the time series by itself is not enough, okay, for today's uh, challenges in trying to, you know, get a good uh, prediction, a good, a good forecast. So usually you need uh, this uh, additional, additional uh, features to help, right, the algorithm, help the algorithm to then, you know, uh, steer into a good, uh, a, a good forecast, okay. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to interrupt. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so the fees package. The fees package is an acronym of what is called the features and statistics for from time series. Okay. Hence the name. And we have discussed that we can do certain uh, transformations, right? Numerical transformation, log transformations, square root. Uh, exponential, et cetera, and also with the box cost transformation, try to get that seasonal, you know, uniform, right? Which is the, the main goal. Um, so uh, the chapters, the, the section 4.1, uh, what it does is that, you know, we start with certain simple, right? Simple statistics. And the first, uh, you know, the first exercise here is to get some data from the tourism uh, data set and then just calculate the mean for all the time series that are there. As you can see, there's a region, there's a state, and there's a purpose. Okay. And we are going, we're going to see that the author, uh, Hinman, Heinemann, the author uh, uses this very regularly, that tourism uh, data set, because there's a lot to unpack in this one. Okay, so for example, in this, with that, you know, uh, little uh, script using the features, right? The features uh, uh, function, uh, the trips are the ones, are the ones that has the, the values, right? The, the time series itself. And then if you don't, you know, subset it by any of the indices, which are the region, state and purpose, in other words, you take the whole, 
the whole uh, uh, set of time series, and you do the list by the mean, which will be equal to the mean, of course, and arrange it by the mean, then you will have the mean for all the all those uh, you know set, uh, subset uh, time series. Okay, so nothing you know nothing out of the ordinary, right? So one of the comments that the author says that, for example, in other, in purpose of other, because he has visiting, he has business, he has holiday. So in others, we can see that the least average number of visits, okay? If, it's like you take the time series and then you draw the mean, right? You draw a line that, you know, is the, is, is the mean of all those, those values. So the Kangaroo Island in South, Australia, right? South Australia, this number here. Okay, I don't know if you can check it out. Okay, can you see the, the shadowing? Yeah, I highlighting. Uh, yeah. That, supposedly, that's the mean, that's the least average number of visits from, you know, all the regions and states and the purpose of other. Okay, so that could give you some hints of what are what is the, you know, the, the, the movement. The, the movement of, of, of visits throughout these uh, regions. So in terms of the quantiles, which is kind of interesting, okay, uh, because the mean, as we know, is the average, right? But not all the time uh, give us a good representation of how the data is distributed, correct? So now we want to know what is the quantiles, which is the sectioning of those values, right, within quarters. So we take, for example, 0%, 25%, 50%, 70%, and, and 100%, okay? Which is divide the distribution of values between uh, four quarters, okay, within those ranges. So let me see if I can do this because sometimes, you know, it jumps to the other slide. So let's see, okay, good. <laughs> I got it, I got it. <laughs> I, still, I still have the, the thing. Okay, so as you can see from the state, right? We're talk, taking state, um, uh, you know, the, the region, the state and the purpose. So we have, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers for each of the quantiles. One thing that is very interesting is for example, uh, you know, when, when you do this in a box plot, for example, you get a graphical representation on how those quantiles are, you know, are distributed. Because the middle of the box plot is the median, which is the 50% quantile. Then you have the edges of the box, which is 25 and 75%. And then you have the upper, you know, lo lower quantiles, which is not zero or, or home 100, but it's, you know, more or less the measure of how outside that, you know, you get an outlier or an extreme value. So here, for example, if you see business of Southern Australia, South Australia, for example, you see something very interesting. You see a zero in zero percent. You see also a zero in 25%. And then you start seeing certain numbers in 50 and 70%. And then you see a big number, 28.6 in 100%. So, you know, visually, if you have the distribution, you will see that that distribution is kind of skewed, right? It's kind of skew, uh, you know, uh, a left skew, okay? Left skew, in other words, you know, there's a long tail, you know, to the, to, to the left of the distribution, okay? And that, that is something that could be important instead of the transformations that we could do for meeting the assumptions of our predicting algorithm, okay? Uh, usually it's better, you know, to use it visually. So maybe a box plot here, it will be a, a, a better, you know, a better representation because with number is kind of, you know, it's kind of fuzzy. Okay. Okay, good. So let's keep on. So in 4.2, we're talking about the autocorrelations uh, features and the function that comes with the, with that package with feasts is this function, right? features of autocorrelation. And here it gives you, uh, I just, you know, copy and paste it from the, uh, from the book. These are, you know, some of the features that are automatically uh, uh, calculated uh, for you. For example, you have the first autocorrelation coefficient for real data. 
you have the first auto correlation coefficient from the difference data, the, the sum of the squares of each one, the sum of the squares of 10 auto correlation coefficients, and the first auto correlation coefficients, and so forth. Okay. So I'm not going to delve too much in this, uh, but you know, I just want to make sure that you know that this function gives you, you know, this kind of output. And following the book, right? Uh, again, with the tourism uh, data, this is this chapter is more about tourism than <laughs> any other. So you see that you get, you know, different different measures from the different regions, states, and purposes, like we have, like we did with the with the quantas. Okay. And this could be, uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so this could be some parameters that may help you, right? May help you to understand uh, how your, uh, your time series is behaving in terms of uh, autocorrelation, you know, which are the, the, the lags, you know, that, that are important in the model that could be input to other, you know, to other functions. And also the seasonal. Uh, 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 behavior, okay? Uh, for example, let me see, I don't know if it's the other one, but there's one, you know, it's not here, but there's one that gives you the strength of the seasonal, you know, component in a time series. That's for, you know, for the next, okay? Uh, questions or comments so far? Yes, Good. I uh -huh. do have a question. So yeah. I don't really get um, what's actually done when we are differencing the data. Okay. Could let you me, elaborate that? Yeah, let me check. So it's explained in the SEF um, subsection, but I just right. don't get the explanation. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe it's in the... I think. I think in general... I think in general, you're just, uh, you know, like taking consecutive observations and subtracting them um, mm -hmm. so that, uh, and that would be like a first difference. And then you do that again, and it's a second difference. Okay. And you do that again, it's like a third difference. I, I think, I'm pretty sure that's normally what, what it means. Um, okay. Uh, the, the book doesn't explain it very well. It just states it, okay, that this is a parameter of autocorrelation, for example, the first autocorrelation coefficient from the difference data. But I think, Kevin, it's in the, it's, it's in, it's in the, it's in the right track, okay? Yeah, so and the idea behind it is that you're removing trend. Uh, Correct. Or when you're All doing right. it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, but let me, let me do some, some more research. On, on that one and you know i'll get i'll get back to you <laughs> it looks like also in chapter eight uh they're when they're talking about arima there's mm -hmm. uh, a whole subsection on differencing um, okay okay so, yeah okay good good and chapter eight oh, I, i'm think i also I'm, I'm also the one that are that is facilitating that one so maybe i should take a look there <laughs> okay so these are some of the parameters you know, that that function, you know, gives you for, you know, let's, let's put it that way for, for free, right? You know, it just calculates uh, those parameters. Um, let me see some, okay. So in 4.3, uh, we have the STL, the seasonal trend and, 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 and reminder of the, the decomposition. Now we have seen this already in chapter three, and this is the formula I still, I'm struggling with the latex, but you know, I'll I'll, I'll get the formula, you know, <laughs> more more nicely represented. But are you using quarter? Are you using sorry to interrupt? Are you using quarter by the way, or are you? Uh, uh, what? What quattro? Qu 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 yeah, how, I'm quarto, sure quarto, Yes. No, no. I, I'm using regular markdown here. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, is quarto uh, easier to represent this? Uh, I think it's about the same for this type of thing, but. Um, I haven't used it much, but I'm just, I was just curious. I thought I heard you mention it a while ago. And, um... I, I know that Mikhail used it in, I think it's chapter two exercise. Oh, okay. Maybe and it was really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's exactly the same. You just remove the two yeah. options, that's it. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I did. I went to a uh, facilitated a meetup a few weeks ago um, where mm-hmm. there was a presentation on it. But anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just curious I, I, if you I think, were using it. You know, talking about that, I think there's one coming. I don't know if this week or next week uh, with uh, Isabella Velasquez from our studio, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of an introduction to, you know, using Quarto. Okay. So I just, you know, just so you you know cool. <laughs> okay so uh yeah so you know so, so some of the things you know needs a little bit more you know polishing but this is the formula right you have your time series and you can decompose it right you know you can extract uh this uh you know these components the trend components the seasonal components and then the what is left right the, the reminder um it gives you, you know, certain, you know, uh, cer- certain uh, uh, theory on this in terms of the max or the variance, etc. I'm not going to delve too much into it. You know, just make sure that you know you, you know, read it about it, and if there's any, you know, this that you want to, you know, uh, uh, bring up, you know, uh, please, please do. Okay. So, um. Of course, these measures uh, will be useful for, for example, uh, understanding. It's like a, you know, when, when you have a tabular data, right? You try to understand what is that data represents, right? Uh, for example, which is the target, uh, which are the predictors, if it's a supervised, you know, uh, type of uh, 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 learning situation, maybe there's no target. So you know that then, you know, you have to use other other techniques, right? The clustering, uh, uh, dendrograms and all that. So here, this you know uh, functions gives you an exploratory tool to try to understand what is the time series uh, trying to tell you. Okay, you know what what is this it about? Is it if it has a, a strong uh, trend? You know, uh, um, uh, uh, time series. If it's a weak trend, if it's a more seasonal or less seasonal. Etc. So these measures will give you a little bit more, uh, you know, understanding of what you know the 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 trend, the seasonality, and the, of course the remainder is all about. Okay. So for example, we have here. I kind of put it all in one page, but was here you saw you saw before the trend, right? The trend strength, and as you can see right here, that the biggest number of this, uh, you know. Uh, piece of, of the of, of the puzzle, uh, the biggest number, the trend strength is there's a big trend strength in the other purpose for Adelaide and South Australia, at least in this you know in in this chunk. Then you have, for example, the same situation, but now it changes, right? The seasonal strength by year changes to Adelaide South Australia holidays, and as we will see holidays usually is has a strong seasonal component right because you have certain you know periods during the year that are holiday for example uh, if you go to france you know that uh between july and august uh usually everyone is uh you know <laughs> is, is is on vacation okay because that's the public you know uh, uh employees that are on vacation and you know the the country is a, a, a little bit a little bit different than in the rest of, of the years. So something similar is happening, you know, here, and we can, uh, you know, we, we can we can measure it, okay, with the with this uh, with these features. Then you have seasonal peak year, okay, you know how many how many peaks uh, you have per season uh, or through the year. You have spikiness, okay, uh, which is a little bit of variation, you know, measure variation. How linear. Uh, is the your time series and so on? Okay, I think there's more here. There's curvature. You know, there's an explanation later in the in the book about all these you know uh, components. Can but, I ask a question? Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So all these time series features. This is the summary of mm-hmm. um, every time of each of the time series, right? So you right. condense the information from one time series, for example, into all this uh, summary number. So what, and then my question is, Mm -hmm. 
how would you actually use it for um, modeling purposes? Because it's not like you have, so let's say you have the time series data from January to December. Right. Well, it's not like you create are creating a new features that um, exist for January to, to December. So how do you, but you only have one value for the whole time series. Correct. How would you use it eventually in your modeling or is it just something useful for um, exploration or for getting to know mm -hmm. the characteristic of the time series? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, Kevin, uh, I believe that you have a little more experience. Okay, so could you pitch in? Yeah, I mean, I, um, just a couple of thoughts. I think, uh, I think definitely in the exploratory analysis, especially if you have many, many time series and, you know, you don't, you can't really like look at all of them by, you know, manually, like looking at these features and trying to understand kind of how they differ. Um, I think this is a really good way to do it. Other, my, the, the main use case I often care about is anomaly detection, uh, at least with my job. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so if you have something like this, like you said, where you're, you're creating all these features, you know, uh, a, a, really, a large number of features um, for each time series uh, where you get one row per time series, um, you could feed this into, you know, an anomaly detection algorithm and find the oddest time series on whatever dimensions you want to include. And I actually started doing that with, um, uh, I jumped ahead to read this chapter a while ago and then uh, mm -hmm. started, I used this uh, exact function to um, look at the main ones I was looking at, I think are like, um, uh, what was it? There's like a Hearst exponent one. And then there's also um, like, I think it represents, I think there's it, like represents how noisy or like predictable the series is. And then also um I, I, a lot of the time I care about like, like mean and variance shifts, um, you know, right. if there was like a recent change. So um, that's something else I include like the mean and variance shifts. But anyway, like, I think it's really great for something like that. If you have like a multi-dimensional anomaly detection approach, um, this is a great way to summarize kind of a lot of different characteristics of the time series and then find the ones that are weird, you know, in whatever Correct. way you, way you want to describe it. So, um, yeah. And then, and then, and then also I, I was using it, um, recently with the, so not only anomaly detection in kind of the sense of like feeding it into an algorithm, like, uh, I use like this thing called isolation force a lot. Um, mm -hmm. yes. um, but then, uh, the other thing that I was doing too is, um, that I found really helpful, really useful is, um, you know, like uh, basically for each series, I, I want to find like the, the, all the, the time series where there was a recent um, mean or variance shift, um, like in the last like couple weeks. So um, basically I just like, you know, you can just like compute each of the, the biggest like mean and variance. It shows you like, what is the biggest mean and variance shift in the, each time series. And then it'll say the index of of that mean and variance shift in that series and then so basically i'm like like give me all the time series where uh the biggest mean or variance shift was in the last week you know and then and then i just look at those and and then say okay is that like a sustained shift like you know does it look like the trend really changed and like um you know and 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 then i just like investigate more um so anyway that's just like how how i've used it in like the short amount of time that I started using this these features, but um, if that helps, but yeah, that's that's a few ways I think um, you could use it. Okay, uh, excellent, uh, excellent, excellent use cases. Um, okay. And for example, um, you will see that some of the you know algorithms that we're going to be you know talking about uh, exponential smoothing, uh, ARIMA, you know the, the classic ones, uh, they have certain assumptions. Okay, so you have to make a judgment in terms of, okay, is this time series, ARIMA, exponential smoothing, or any other, other of the traditionals, is it complying with assumptions that the model is expecting? Okay, for example, uh, one of the assumptions is that the, 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 the time series 
is uh, you know not non-stationary, right? Okay, the the augmented Dicky uh, Fuller uh, test. So if your series is not you know uh, non-stationary, in other words, stationary, then you will have problems with certain algorithms, right? You know to model that. So you have to find out. But you know if you go blind, if you don't do this, you know this exercise, then you are you know. You're, you're not using the best tools to try to match your time series with the, you know, with the with the with the algorithms. Okay, that's another you know approach that could be uh, could be practical. And um, like I said, you know, this is more exploratory. In other words, you know, you are trying to digest uh, what is the behavior, what is the pattern of each of these time series, because as you can see, there are a lot of time series here, right? Okay, you know, you have the permutations of region. Of a state of uh, uh, what is the other one? Uh, purpose. Uh, purpose. Uh, let me see. Region, state, uh, purpose, and then and then you have the values, right? Which is another you know another component. So uh, yeah, uh, you have you have a several time series here, and this is something you know kind of regular in the in the business, because for example, if you're working for you know a, a, a big you know company, retail company. Or even, you know, a service company, you will have, you know, many, many uh, uh, components, ma many time series, and you have to know, you know, how they how they behave. Okay, uh, you know, the, the the days of one or two time series, and you know, everything is fine. I don't. I think it's you know a, a long gone. <laughs> now with computer power, you know, you you're required to juggle a, a lot of time series, and and as Kevin said, you know, this tools uh, lets you focus on the, depending on the goal, on certain time series that need your attention, okay? Because maybe the other ones, they don't, you know, they, they behave normally or they don't have, you know, certain features that they are the ones that you are trying to hunt. And this is, this helps you solve. Um, and I thought it, uh, that was all really great. Uh, thanks for those examples. And I also thought of uh, another use case where you extract all these features from these time series. And like if your goal is, is something like classification where you, you know, let's say you want, you have all these labels where it says, you know, like going back to the COVID example, like there was a lockdown during this period of time or there wasn't. And you want to predict, classify future time series and say, you know, to find, find the ones that are most probable to have some kind of a lockdown event or, or like, like in based on the, what the time series itself looks like. Um, so you could feed this, you know, tabular information into um, mm -hmm. something like that and classify, you know, so, so, so there's, I think there's a lot of cases where you don't want to do any kind of forecasting, you know, but you want whatever information is contained in the time series itself to, to predict something else. Um, um, so, but, but yeah, I love the, the set of features that he has. I mean, it's, it's so much and they're all really, really interesting in their own right. And I could see kind of use cases for different, including different, each of these, um, yeah, and, and you can all in terms of exploration too, right? Like since you have those labels of like which whatever we forget what the first few are, but like which region or whatever, mm -hmm. you could you could be like, oh, you know, it's interesting. Like yeah. uh, for everything that's has a holiday purpose, um, mm -hmm. like they're all a lot spikier than everything that has like a business purpose, or everything in you know, Alladale Hills is is. Uh, is like noisier than everything else. Like, why is that? And yeah, that's it, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's continue, right? Uh, so here, uh, you know, just, just through the sequence of the, you know, of the, of the presentation here in the, in the book, uh, here we have, uh, you know, kind of a, a you know, a, a facet plot, okay? There are different flood plots from different regions, okay? And what they're plotting, plotting here is in the X uh, axis, right? This one here is the trend strength that we already have from the, you know, from the, from, from, from the function, the, the feed AS, ASF. 
And then on the Y is the seasonal strength. So you have in one axis, the trend, in the other one, uh, the seasonal, okay? And the colors represents the purpose. If it's business, holiday, other, and visiting. And some of the, you know, the insights that you could uh, derive from this uh, plot is that usually holiday has a, a strong seasonal, right? Uh, component, in other words, the, 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 you know, this, this points that you see the, the green ones, I think is the, yeah, it's kind of a, a greenish color. They're usually at the top, right? At the top of those, you know, uh, facet plots, right? So that means that there's a strong seasonal component. When the uh, points move to the, to the right, then it means, or to the left, it means that they have a strong trend component or a weak trend component. And the same with the with the season, okay. So uh, the author, you know, is pointing to us that the stronger trends tend to be Western Australia, right? Because those are the points that are moving more to the to the right, right? And of course, uh, the most seasonal series can also be identified and plotted, which is you know uh, things like holiday, etc. So just with this uh, plot, you can infer a lot of. Uh, patterns okay for from different you know different regions and 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 different purposes okay okay and this is an example for example uh this is an example of the uh of what is it holiday right holiday uh snowy mountains uh new south wales okay i had to read it this way because it was in the <laughs> like at the vertical so as you can see, uh, it has a very, very strong seasonal, right? Very strong seasonal, those, you know, up and downs and all that. And then also you have a, a interesting trend, right? It goes a little bit down and then it goes, it goes up. Okay. Let me put this. Okay. So this shows the holiday trips, the most popular ski regions of Australia. Okay. As a matter of fact, ski region, that means like in Australia snows, huh? Okay, that's a good thing to know. <laughs> yeah, because usually what you think of Australia is, you know, hot weather, really. <laughs> and forest fire, unfortunately. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, okay, so uh, here it gives you more information about each of the features, the seasonal peak year, the seasonal uh, through year, the spikiness, the linearity, the curvature, the EACF1, which is the first autocorrelation again, the remainder series, the STLEASF10, which is the 10 autocorrelation coefficients of the remainder. Okay. Um, let me keep going. Okay. So, there's a whole bunch of other features. If you go to the to the book, right? Okay, these are other features that you can also, uh, you know, uh, that the functions can calculate. In total, I believe they are around forty-eight. Okay, that these functions uh, provides. So there is no uh, there's no scarcity of features here. Okay, in fact, some of them, you know, I mean, <laughs> first time I you know, I, enc I encountered them about the, you know, the KPSS, the shift here or whatever. Yeah, those are the end were the ones I was talking about that I use a lot. Oh, yeah? These, these okay. shift level max and shift level index. So like, okay. so yeah, so it's like looking at these consecutive sliding windows and finding right. the right. means in each and like what, which one, what's the biggest difference between consecutive sliding windows and then the index gives you the actual location where that occurs. Mm -hmm. um, and they have the same thing for variant shifts. Uh, I think those are those are awesome. Yeah, I think I think there's a, a, you know any feature for any situation that you want to you know do and to study. I think I think, and also there are more because I've seen, for example, in some of the you know in in other packages in R, uh, you see for example Fourier uh, transformations. Okay, which that goes you know way back to the calculus you know uh, days. And also uh, signs, cosines, okay? You know, 
for for, for different uh, you know checking different patterns you know uh, sinusoidal cosino so uh, yeah there I mean there, there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot to you know to to uh, uh, you know to to understand in terms of the features that we need and how we can we can how can we can make the the, the most of it okay uh, so again this is the last part of the Okay, here, here it goes, you know, th this gives you 48 features, right? You know, the whole set of features that the fees package uh, uh, gives you. So let me, I think we're going to be ending here. Okay, so this one, it comes from the G, uh, G Galley uh, package, okay? He said here, which is like a pair plot. In other words, you know, you have uh, different sets, right, of features, and then you you do like a matrix here, and depending on intersection, you get different uh, representations. You can get if it's continuous, you get a distribution, you know, density function. If it's uh, segmented by category, then you get this box plots. Uh, also, you get correlations if they're numeric. Okay, so for example, for example, just you know, uh, giving giving you the a start a start. Uh, this first uh, row, right? The first row. So you see here the intersection between purpose, remember business, holiday, uh, visiting, and other. Uh, does this, this intersection tells you that for, for the purposes, this is the season of strength. So rapidly you see that that uh, dark green, right? Dark green box plot is the one that has the, you know, the highest, right? In terms of the media and also the distribution. And the other ones are kind of you know low, so that one of course will correspond to the holiday, to the holiday uh, you know uh, purpose. Also, you see the correlations here, okay, between the seasonal strength and the seasonal partial correlation, and also the autocorrelation, the first one. And as you can see, there's a strong correlation between holidays and and you know the the, the seasonal strength, but then in other the correlation goes down. So you can, you know, you can spend days here, you know, just, <laughs> you know, getting insights, etc. The thing is that because you have a main goal in terms of what you're going to do with this time series, this may help you to understand some of the uh, questions that you are, you know, that you're looking. So it's important to understand first, okay? You have all these features, all these visualizations, but you have to have a priori uh, certain questions that you want to answer, and then you look for them. Okay. Uh, okay. So what else? Okay. So it's three o'clock. Uh, do we finish now or? Well, I can you guys, the seat. You guys huh? can keep talking. I have, I probably have to drop. Um, but uh, okay, you guys feel free to keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I can watch the rest of it. I can I, I can stop it here because this is more the principal component analysis, you know, uh, uh, applied to uh, time series. So we can talk about this and then also talk a little bit about the exercise in the next right. uh, meeting. Okay. Uh, okay. It sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. This is great. I appreciate okay. it. Great. Excellent. Th th thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Very informative. Right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Are you done?